Hey everyone, it's Brooke, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite read of 2017 so far. I mean, we're very early. There's lots of time for this book to be usurped, but right now, Signal to Noise by Sylvia Moreno Garcia is just all kinds of my favorite thing in the world to read. <laughs> uh, like, I want to reread it right now. So, I've had this book since it came out, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, I remember watching Rincey's review of this. She loved this book. And like, gosh, that's on my shelves. I really need to get to that. I really think I'll love it. But also at the same time, when I think I'm really going to love a book, I put it off. I do that a lot. Uh, so I didn't. But wanting to get more into like Mexican literature and like Mexico as a country, I decided that now was the perfect time to pick this up because um, Sylvia Marina Garcia is originally from Mexico. She lives in Canada now. Uh, and I just don't even have the words really to discuss how much I loved this really short, simple little book. It's really not simple. Uh, it does, for me, it touches me in the same ways that Liz Moore's The Unseen World touched me, and that it is really focused on character, character growth, and like, relationships. Um, and I feel like even though those two books, these two books are like completely different, they are like sort of at the core of them the same. Um, so like the reader in me that loves The Unseen World is the same reader in me that loves Signal to Noise. If so, I think if you like The Unseen World, you should at least give this one a, a chance. I've seen it advertised as YA and I don't agree. Uh, this takes place mainly, there are two timelines, but... The main one is in 1988-1989, Mexico City. We follow our main protagonist, Meche. I forget her last name. Uh, Meche, though, she's 15. She's growing up. She's coming of age. She's sort of this really brash, stubborn, flawed, uh, type A in your face, always right, pushy kind of person. And so she's a bit of an outcast, like at school, and she has these two friends, and they're sort of like this misfit group, which is just a trope I love, uh, of these three people who have come together mostly because they're outcasts from their, from their peers. Um, so her best friends are Sebastian, who is like this uh, really smart, intellectual, broody, uh, bookish, emo kind of guy. And then there's um, uh, Daniela, who... It has been a little bit more coddled by her parents because she has lupus. Um, so she's she feels she reads slightly younger, a little bit more immature, um, sort of easily manipulated by someone like Meche. Um, and so like their relationships with each other are very important. And basically what happens is Meche discovers that they can perform magic through like her record player and certain songs of certain records and they go about using that magic in the ways that you expect teenagers to use magic um, and then something happens and they end up um, having a falling out and then the sort of more present day timeline in 2009 Meche's having to go back to Mexico City to bury her father and she meets up with Sebastian and Daniela um, you know in her mid 30s and it's just really about how Meiji as a character grows or doesn't grow. Her interactions specifically with Sebastian. Um, and just, it, it really is just a person's life. And the magic in this exists, but it's, it's very magical realism in the sense that there's magic in this world, but it doesn't feel like a magical world. It's very much just accepted as part of everyday life. Um, some people notice there's magic, some people don't. Um, it's not, it's not, it's just a very normal part of the book. Uh, and it, it's a part of the story, but it's not what the story is about. And I just love this book so much, guys. So the way it, like, unravels the way that like the present day storyline uh interweaves within the the 80s storyline and the way you see Meche as adult compared to who she was as a teenager the way she has changed or hasn't changed 
um, the ways you see the relationship with her friends grow and then fall apart and then maybe come back together and maybe not. Just how she weaves all these like plot lines together uh, and the pacing of it and um, the reveals and uh, just getting, it's just so well done. I think that that talent, the talent to unfold relationships the way that Marina Garcia does is so rare and it's one of my most favorite things in books. Uh, it also has a certain aspect to it that I really loved uh, that I can't talk about because I feel like it's a little bit of a spoiler. I didn't know it going in and so it was just a complete sort of surprise to me because I think that's another thing this book does is I kind of had expectations of what it was. I didn't know much about it um, and it sort of completely like subverted all my expectations like and then I thought I could see certain things coming and they sort of did but they were just slightly different than what I was expecting which is always just such a really lovely delight. Um, and there's a certain plot line in, the, in here, like I said, that I have been wanting to read for a very long time. It speaks to me. It's the kind of plot line I love in my TV and my movies. Um, and, and I rarely find it in books done this way. So I can't talk about it, but I want to. Uh, and oh, everything about this is so good. May J is a character, bless her heart. I loved her so much. She is so terrible. <laughs> She's like really pretty awful and I was annoyed with her and wanted to strangle her but at the same time I cared so deeply about what what was happening to her and uh, she broke my heart more than once um, and I just ugh, ugh. Uh, so yeah so I guess if I had to like say th things that maybe people wouldn't like about this a lot of it is from a 15-year-old's perspective. I think that uh, she writes from a 15-year-old's perspective really well. I think that it's very authentic. But if you don't like to read sort of angsty teenage <laughs> POVs, you might struggle with this. But I saw so much of myself in Mei Jay. Like, Mei Jay and Sebastian, like, if you combine the two of them, like, that was me as a teenager. So I just, I related so much. Um, so, but maybe that's not your thing. Uh, she's still pretty angsty as an adult, to be honest. Uh, it also, it does, there's a couple of little writing ticks that annoyed me, but not enough to, like, lower my opinion of this book at all. But I will point out that there's a couple of, like, sentiments and, like, images that she repeats sort of close together. Like, you might read, like, a specific image on one page and then 20 pages later you might see it again. And I noticed that, uh, it only happens a couple of times. Uh, so that was a little nitpicky thing. And also I think sometimes you can tell that, and this might just be me because I'm very deeply involved in learning Spanish right now. I think I can tell sometimes that she's someone whose native language is Spanish and this feels sort of translated. It's, I mean, I assume she just wrote it in English, but, but she, but since it's her, Spanish is her native language, like I, I could court, I could kind of see the Spanish sentence she was translating in here. I, that's very nitpicky and I actually sort of liked it. I, I thought it added, I thought it felt very Spanish, which I think adds to it's taking place in Mexico City. Um, so it didn't bother me, but I feel like maybe some people will be like, oh, that's kind of a weirdly worded sentence. I, but that could just be very nitpicky too. Um, I just really love this book, like a whole lot. And I, I didn't, I guess it just snuck up on me. I, I thought I was going to love it, but I didn't know I was going to love it. Like, this is five stars, without a doubt. And I wanted to immediately reread it. Um, and it's just a simple sort of, of life story. I mean, nothing, nothing really happens. I mean, it does, but it doesn't at the same time. I just, and she does it so quickly. Just all this development. I just want to read books like this forever. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Bye, guys.